Ryan, first off, I'm a huge fan of, of Freiberg. I really love your film when it first came uh, out. Come on. Thank you so much. Now, you know, Shutter fans are very picky. And I looked on Shutter right now and it had four out of five skulls. Is that a cool thing to get that feedback? You know, you've said either people are going to re- really love it or really hate it. But how cool was it to get that kind of reception, first of all, on Shutter? Yeah, no, it's, I think the whole experience has been, uh, yeah, it's been amazing. And I mean, Fryberry getting on Shutter, it's the perfect, you know, the perfect home for it. And, you know, the, the amount of people that have, you know, checked it on Shudder and reached out to me has been like insane. Like it's been, it's been insane trying to hard to tie, keep, keep it up with everybody. But yeah, the fans are just, yeah, they're, they're, they're just loving it. Yeah. You know, I was, re- I was, I saw in a previous interview that you said, why, why you were making this before you made this, you had some kind of uh, kidney surgery or infection. You had sepsis. A lot of people can actually, when that happens, when tragedy strikes like that, they can just cash it in and not go for it. Can you just talk about that fork in the road and your decision to really just go for it and not cash it in? Yeah. I mean, I've always been very uh, driven and ambitious. I'm always like, you know, got to do it, got to do it, got to get things done. And I've, you know, I've always, I've always been like that. And in my career at the time, I just got to a point where uh, I haven't made my film yet. I've always wanted to make a feature film. It's not happened. I've come close five times and like depression just kind of like set in and it was just getting slowly like worse and worse. And then, um, yeah. And then in, I ended up getting these like pains in my, in, in my uh, lower stomach. And then I thought like, Oh fuck, like I must have cancer or something because I had all these like scans and nobody could tell me anything. And obviously, you know, you always think, you know, you always think the worst. And then uh, eventually I had this one scan and they were like, we don't know what that is, but we, you've got a, you know, something wrong with your kidney and you're going to need a stent and this and this and this. And then I had the operation and yeah, I had, I had the operation, uh, got sepsis, nearly died. Uh, my cat had cancer, I lost a girlfriend at the time. It was just like, just like really kicking me, you know, while I was down and sitting at the bottom of that pit, uh, I was done. I was like finished, but then, you know, I, you know, I didn't want to take medication. I didn't want to see a psychiatrist. And that's just me being me and being stubborn. But I, I was lucky, luckily, I was lucky enough to knew, to know what I could do to make me feel better and to get me out of this. And it was to make a feature film. And when I, as soon as I thought of that, I'm like, I'm doing it. That's like, I'm doing it. There's, there's, there's no better time than now. And I should have thought that a long time ago. But the, the the great thing is, something can something great can come out of a bad thing. You know what I mean? And you know, maybe if this shit didn't happen to me, then maybe maybe I would have still been plodding around, not plodding around, but still trying to do what I do. But I think it it uh, even though it was the worst time of my life. Uh, I'm so grateful that I actually went through it in such a fucking weird way because it literally made me have Fry Barry. It, it, it made me push push myself to the limits and it was quick. It wasn't even like a few months or a year down the line. It was literally, I wrote a, a brief 50% brief scene uh, breakdown within three days, spoke to my producer I wanted to develop the movie as I went. Uh, a month later, we started shooting. That's literally how how quick it all got together. But when I had the idea, I knew that this is the one. This is this is like literally the one to do because I think as a first time feature film director, it's such a big thing to think. You know, which one am I going to do first? Uh, you know, which script should I choose? And I had all these other scripts, probably, but it would have been way easier to choose one of the other ones on the table. But when I got the idea, I was like, oh, this is different. I haven't seen it before. Uh, I needed it to to be something that I could be super, super, super creative with. And obviously it was it was Fry Barry. It was the right one. It was the right uh, choice to make, you know. Was one of the reasons why it was the right choice to make is just as a viewer viewer watching this, it doesn't feel like it's tethered to compromise or pandering it's yeah. just a it's story a pretty you, bold movie. <laughs> yeah and it yeah. feels like it's someone who passion who wanted to really passionately make it and he or she had a 
I I don't give an F attitude about the about the narrative. And I think that's sometimes you got to go go really bold. Was that one of the reasons why this was the right one for you to do? It, it, it was just the right one because, like I said, like I hadn't seen this film before. So obviously we need to think out the box, you know, as filmmakers and we need to do something different. But it was it was it was just the type of film and the 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 setup of the story and character and having uh, uh, Gary, a, a non-trained actor. It was, it was all these things that, that, that gelled together that it was like, that I could really, really be creative. There's, I mean, most films that get greenlit, this is the script, this is how it's gonna be, and then that's it, you know? So with, with this film, I wanted to live in the moment and be organic. And yes, I wrote, wrote all the main pieces of dialogue, but at any time, I could change anything. You know, the setup is there. This, you know, there's this actor and there's this actor, but that I can change everything. And and I, you, you can't really do that in most films that you, you know, that you make with, you know, with a studio. So it was great to, to you know, shoot on the hip and just, and have, when you have a great idea and go, let's do that. And that's where a lot of the beautiful gems in Fry Barry just was born, you know? What did you see in Gary that, you just had really a huge deal of confidence because he's not a thespian. He's not a vet. And for, for this movie to work, he has to really pull it off. You have to have confidence in him. And on top of that, you have to have confidence in you as a collaborator to help orchestrate these scenes with him as, you know. So. Yeah, no, ab- absolutely. I mean, I met Gary about uh, probably about 11, 12 years ago. And I just loved his look. You know, he's just got this presence and this striking look. So, you know, originally, you know, we shot the three minute experimental film also called Fry Barry in 2017, you know, and over the years I put Gary in like music videos that I've done. But uh, when I got the idea for the feature, I was just like, uh, that's why I said when I had the idea and how the story would work and how the character and that he wouldn't say that much, I know I could pull it off with Gary because I'm not asking a non-actor to deliver this you know, a shitload of uh, dialogue and all this. It was just perfect that even if the line delivery was bad, it would be okay because he's a fucking alien. So it, it, it's, it, you know, it's okay that it it would sound a bit odd or weird. He's a, he's a you know, alien in a, in a human body. So there was all those things that just ticked all the boxes that just, you know, just made it work. And, and with Gary, there's, you know, he worked super hard, uh, you know, and trusted me a hell of a lot because I didn't, I didn't let him do any, you know, improv and because of, you know, his background. And I needed that clean slate every day to work with him to get exactly what I wanted. Because as you said, the movie, well, one, the movie's called Fry Barry and he is the, the main thing in the movie and the movie relies on him to, to make it work. So he trusted me and, and we, you know, we had a lot of fun. Uh, we had a lot of fun working and, you know, he didn't even know what we were shooting until 30, 40 minutes before we were shooting. It was because I needed that clean slate to go, we're doing this. So I didn't want him to pre-organize or pre-rehearse uh, or anything. I needed to, to be completely, you know, uh, clean slate. Because if he started to learn something, it would, I know the, the type of person Gary is, that would take me longer to get rid of that and then start fresh again. So I needed that clean slate. Uh, and, and the interesting thing was, you know, his character is, you know, mimicking all these people that, you know, that he meets. And then it was ironic because directing him, you know, a lot of the time I'm, you know, I'm by the side of the camera going, okay, Gary, copy my face. Okay, now do this face. Now do this face. And, uh, you know, and that was because I shoot for the edit and I'm busy editing the film in my head where I'm like, okay, I've got this guy's reaction. Uh, uh, now I need, you know, A, B, C for, you know, Gary's reactions and then also have some options. So it hits those like comedy beats or those weird, you know, those weird moments. But, uh, but yeah, the, as I said, the main reason for picking Gary Green was his, uh, you know, his great unique look that, because nobody looks like him. Nobody's going to go up to him and think he's somebody else. It's like, that's, that's Fry Barry. That's, that's the guy, you know? You know, if so, if people go, go to friedberry.com, they can pick up, order some merch from the movie and just wondering, this is very early days, Ryan. So I'm asking you this kind of on the spot, but the idea of now, you know, NFTs are really blooming and just wondering, a lot of filmmakers are getting into the whole non-fungible tokens. Is that 
a space that a creative space that maybe down the road with with either fried berry or maybe your future films you might explore the nft space like someone might want to you you can release 100 nfts of fried berry and just put it out on the market and people can buy it with ethereum or solana have you even explored that arena yet um we've we've looked at you see i'm big on a, a marketing so if you go on you know the website or the instagram page you you look I'm always thinking like out the box and that's why uh, just going a little bit off topic what you were saying, but that's why, you know, I love the, the, the idea of this film for marketing was endless. There's so many things that you can do with this character. And, you know, if you check Instagram for the, like the mini adverts and stuff that we've done, it's, it's like endless and you can't do that with every film. So this is the, this film is so open that, you know, it's endless to to the amount of ideas that you can take out of the, you know, out of the film and go all these different ways, like you said now. So it, it really is just a, you know, a big um, pit of of ideas that you can bring, you know, that you can take out of this movie and do. So just wondering about Blu- the Blu-ray and DVD releases here stateside next week. How excited are you for that? I'm sure growing up, you must have been a big, or even now, must be a big physical media fan as well. So that must be great for you. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And it's funny because, you know, there's a lot of people that's, you know, reviewing uh, the movie, uh, you know, that's got the Blu-ray and stuff. I'm like, I look, I see these things online. I'm like, I haven't even got the Blu-ray yet. I haven't even, <laughs> I haven't even uh, held it yet. So for me, as like you said, I'm, I love to have that, like you know, that physical uh, uh, copy of the movie. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, to, to, you know, all these great horror fans and movie fans, to, you know, to get hold of that. And as I said, you know, there's, we have like, you know, 50 minutes of like bonus footage uh, on the Blu-ray and stuff. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty awesome. But yeah, as a first film. Uh, feature film director I can't wait to have to have that uh, you know that f- physical copy uh, you know of the movie final question to you is just this is a hard question but right off the top of your head can you name one of your all time favorite movies and what is it about this specific film that still resonates with you today Ooh, um, I love uh, I love the movie uh, Christine um, but uh, I'm, I'm going to move to um, Aliens uh, the second Aliens film, and it's just timeless. It's just no matter how much money you've got now to try and make another film like that, you can't. Like it's just a it's just a brilliant film. The 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 soundtrack, the the characters, um, the actors, uh, just the overall feel and the puppetry and the animatronics and stuff that they you know that they used. Uh, I think it's more puppetry, but um, yeah, just all in camera stuff, and it's brilliant and you know they've made so many aliens movies since then but it still holds so strong and just the pace in the movie is uh is uh is fantastic you know that's so funny yeah never gets old just so very quickly i saw this movie called titan and i was thinking oh after watching this car film i need to watch christine i I was thinking about it today and you you mentioned christine very quickly can you just quickly mention why this gordon film still sticks out for you yeah christine is is very much um it's just a uh, Again, it, it sometimes it's, it's. I think '80s overall, like '80s films and the music and the cinematography and the look and the textures and the grain of those '80s films compared to now. Everything's too clean now. Everything's it's like a commercial. Everything's too polished. You know, it's like people that watch films and and they've just bought a high definition TV and they go, "Oh, I've just got a high definition TV." I'm like, oh, it looks fucking, it looks terrible. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's too sharp. Uh, uh, movies aren't meant to be like that, you know? And, you know, with Christine and the the story and just the cool looking car and it's John Carpenter at his best. And uh, it's just, uh, yeah, I've watched that film so many times as a kid growing up, you know, sitting in my bedroom with my little TV watching it. And yeah, it's just an awesome so I just I just love the feel and the tone, you know, of the movie. And my, my definitely my favorite scene is, you know, just that scene when he when the car's all messed up and he's standing there and he's like, show me. And then the car just starts to, you know, build itself back together again. It's like, yeah, it's super awesome film. And as you're leaving, Carpenter was is a great composer as well. How important was it to have yeah. this just really organic music to your film? And it's a cliche, but really it's it's a huge character in your movie. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think people, I think filmmakers underestimate how important 
it is. And, you know, it's like looking at Blade Runner, taking Van Gallis off it. It's not the same movie. And I knew from the start that he's a, his, his sound design and music goes hand in hand with my visuals. And I knew he would, you know, he would kill it from, you know, from the start. And it's, it's such a important thing in, in filmmaking. And it, it, it really made the film a hundred times, you know, stronger. And I think, I think a lot of people forget, like, if you think of all the old school movies that we like, whether it's like Empire of the Sun or Indiana Jones or E.T., a big part of all those movies is the music. And you, so I think some people forget, they go, oh yeah, the movie's great, but the music is such a big part of those movies that even like if you watch like Poltergeist and stuff like that, it's a, you know, the intro with, you know, the kids in the streets, it's, it's such a big part of, uh, of the movies. And I, I think coming back to the 80s, then they did it, they just did it way more then than they do now, you know? Ryan, thank you so much for your time. And any filmmaker, creator who mentions Empire of the Sun is always good in my book. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> and great job with, with Fry Berry. I hope to talk to you uh, down the road again. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me, man. Thank you. All right.